time has expired. I now recognize the gentleman from Florida, Florida Mr. Donalds, for five minutes. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, witnesses, panelists, thanks for being here. Um, I find it interesting that we're talking about the American Rescue Plan um, since it just didn't work, guys. I mean, come on, we gotta, I'm a finance guy by trade. I just got to Capitol Hill. A um, Couple things, I know the witnesses have said previously that the benefits of the American Rescue Plan have been the potential evictions uh, for people not having enough money to pay rents, decrease in child poverty. Um, I think that was, those were like the big two. Well, we'll come back to that. <clears throat> Give me a second, we'll get there. But it's without question that the American Rescue Plan has led to inflation. Every economist basically has said this. I mean, look, if you wanna talk about inflation, you have a lot of money going to people, right, wrong, or indifferent, money went to people. Um, they didn't have to earn it, which means productivity in the economy is actually down. So people have money, but productivity is down. But when people will take that money to go spend it, I mean, yes, doctor, this is kind of how this works. When they take the money to go spend it in an economy where productivity is down because there's not enough supply of goods and services available, prices then go up in response because productivity is down, but everybody's got money. That's how we get to inflation. The job market, let's talk about that one real briefly. Yes, coming out of the time when the American economy was shut down by government policy because of COVID-19, the job market suffered major hits. But it's virtually without question that it in the red states that had opened up, I'm the gentleman from Florida, I know, the job market actually responded quite well to businesses being able to open up and operate. It was in blue states where the job market did not respond as well. But we all knew up here on Capitol Hill that if you just you know, opened up, the businesses would come back. Look no further than right here in, in DC. Mario Bowser's policies basically wrecked the, 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 the restaurant market here in DC. Most people could not go to work in DC. There was no traffic coming into DC. And the second she alleviated COVID-19 policies, businesses started up opening up again, people started going back to work, et cetera. So I don't think we needed about $2 trillion to recover jobs in the United States. I think what we really needed was just sound, you know, local government policy or state government policy to just open up economies because the states that did that, that's what happened. I want to speak to inflation specifically because this is where we are now. The trip down memory lane was cool. One thing I will say about the states and local governments is that when the American Rescue Plan came through, I know myself and several of the members were looking for an Excel spreadsheet about what states and localities actually needed and what they perceived were gonna be the shortfalls in their budget. There was a funding formula that was created, but there was no spreadsheet about, okay, New York needs this, um, <clears throat> Mayor Williams, your city needs X, Los Angeles needs Y, Miami, Florida needs Z. There was no spreadsheet or no allocation. There was no back and forth that actually rose to a number. It was a funding formula. And they just picked the number out of the air and said, we're gonna spend X amount of money to state and local governments. So when state and local governments have money to spend, not quite sure what they're gonna spend it all. Some figured it out, some did it. You have a glut of money sitting out there in the economy that gets spent in reckless means. And I'm gonna bring this back to the productivity point. People were not working to the degree that they need to work in an economy like ours, which means product is not available for purchase to the degree of the amount of money that's out there to purchase, which means prices go up. Mayor Williams, you said earlier that your constituents would still say that the American Rescue Plan is still a good thing in spite of the inflation that has been created in the United States. Do you think your constituents would actually choose paying $65 per Philip or the American Rescue Plan? Thank you for that question. Uh, I'm not going to play that game. You know, I oh, mean, well, is, I'm, I'm going to reclaim my is, time right there. there. Yeah, reclaim they're your having time. A, they're going to have to fill up. It's 65 bucks, man. Look, I got a sedan. It, I know it how much it is. It I, sir, I know how much it is. I just got a text from my daughter yesterday. I know how much it is, She spent too. 65 Which She one spent would $75 to fill her tank up. You and know, what's but, better? But, you know, the, the American Rescue Plan saved human lives. So I am not going to equate the price of gas over time. our human lives. Let's talk about human lives. Let's talk about this. The COVID-19 vaccinations were basically ready for distribution around January 2021. That's when they were ready for deployment. They were deployed out in a systematic fashion. 
If you look at the deployment rate per day of COVID-19 vaccines, there was no change in the rate per day between the Trump administration and the Biden administration. There was no change. As a matter of fact, the Biden administration was slow in vaccine deployment. They had to actually drop the FEMA sites that they were doing because it was the most inefficient way. They actually had to follow the Ron DeSantis model, which was actually giving it to pharmacies so they can deploy the vaccines in a much more efficient manner. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. This was fun. I yield back. Gentlemen, time has expired. And now we're